Hello, ladies, and welcome back to another episode of, you know, Common New Mom Questions. Um, this is Chubby After Baby, and these are, like I said, New Mom Questions. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, so today's uh, question is, can you spoil a newborn by holding them too much, right? I don't know how many times you've heard it. I've personally heard it several times, you know, uh, where my aunt or my mom or, you know, mother-in-law, whoever that person is, right? They're like, oh, put that baby down, let them walk, or, you know, put that baby down, let them get some tummy time and, and to start, you know, building up his muscles and and all of those things. And so it really made me start thinking, right? can you spoil right your newborn by holding them too much does it slow down their overall growth and development right these are questions that i had hopefully you had these questions too and again we're not going with my opinion we're gonna go see what google says what some of the authority um websites say on this topic and as always follow along with me to do the research we can do the research together you can just listen to my wonderful voice tell you about all the things that are being read and let's have a discussion about it uh in the comments okay so can you spoil your newborn by holding them too much all right looks like our first entry is web md web md um you can't spoil a baby Popular to contrary, or sorry, contrary to popular myth, it's impossible for a parent to hold or respond to the baby too much. Child development experts say infants need constant attention to give them the foundation to grow emotionally, physically, and intellectually. So we've opened that up to dive a little bit more into um, WebMD. You can also see the other questions that people also ask: Is holding a newborn too much bad? Um, is it normally want to be held all the time? Oh, here goes one for Helpline, right? Can you spoil a newborn? We're going to open up that. Uh, can you spoil a child or a baby? All right, AU is Australia. So we'll see what they have to say. Uh, there goes one of our uh, sites that we always like to look at, parents.com. All right, so we'll start off with these few websites and maybe we'll look through some of the people also ask later on if we have time. I'll try to keep these relatively short, just enough for you to really get the information from a few different sources and kind of combine them with your own observations and wisdom uh, just to give you an idea. All right. All right, so this is the WebMD. And we read that a little bit. Okay. So a challenge of the newborn is getting to know the world is somehow reliable and trustworthy and that meets his or her basic needs, uh, says J. Kevin Nugent, um, director of Breselton Institute at Children's Hospital in Boston and child psychologist. All right. Respond to a baby's cues isn't a matter of spoiling, he says. It's a matter of meeting the child's needs. All right, cool. That's a really interesting perspective that you holding them and, and responding to them quickly shows them that, uh, the world, I guess, is somehow tr reliable. Yeah, their world is somehow reliable and trustworthy. All right, myth number one, let them cry a little. When your baby cries, the typical infant will cry about three hours a day in the first three months, more if they have colic. This isn't because they're trying to manipulate you. They haven't learned how to do that yet. They're crying because they're hungry, tired, lonely, 
or plain uncomfortable, and that's their only way of letting you know. Ah, oh, check this out. A spoiled child is one that uh, a spoiled child is one that's manipulative, but babies don't learn that until they're about nine months. They can cry just to get you to do something for them, says Dr. Barbara Howard. All right, so something to keep in mind, you know, when your kid turns nine months, they got the whole manipulative cry going on. Uh, and I have definitely seen that, you know, the whole, you know, cry, pick me up, right? And they only want you to pick them up because either you're taller or they're trying to overcome an obstacle, right? But they actually want to get down. So prime example, um, my nephew, uh, he, he just turned one. So he started walking and what he'll do is like there's gates or something. If he wants to get over the gate, right, he'll cry on the other side of the gate um, and then request that you pick him up, right? And then, you know, you pick him up for a moment and you're like, oh, right, like the stove or something. And you're like, oh, let me turn this down. And before you get over there, right, he's, he's requesting that you put him down, right? <laughs> so now you put him down on the other side of the gate, which is where he wanted to be. Um, you go back to the stove and like, you know, he's just doing his own thing, which you're like, I didn't want you over here for a reason. So now you have to pick him up and take him back to the other side of the gate only for him to start crying again, right? Like total <laughs> manipulation. Um, so yeah, I, I can definitely believe that they get that. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, these look like some tear taming techniques. Um, all right, let's see. By paying attention to the baby's cry, parents aren't just responding to the child's physical needs. Babies learn to sense, learn a sense of security, comfort, nurturing, and warmth, which gives them confidence to explore and learn, says Dr. Deborah Campbell, director of neonatology at Montefiore Medical Center in New York. In fact, studies show that babies who develop a sense of security from their caregivers in the first year will be more independent, self-confident, and happier later. Babies can sense even in those first few months the unavailable parent. A uh, father of two ages, 18 and 21, fresh her childhood studies, family, infants can become disconnected and develop a real sadness, like somehow nothing seems to be working for me. Interesting. There it is again. When a child passes the nine month mark and begins to learn the art of persuasion, parents can become more selective in responding to cries. I, I think that's so funny. Uh, okay. Myth number two you're holding too much. Uh, in this technique called kangaroo care, neonatologists have found that holding a preterm baby uh, closely as much as possible offers many benefits. Not only does the parent's body temperature keep the baby warm, but the closeness reduces crying, helps regulate breathing and heart rate, improves weight gain, and results in better growth. The same theory applies to full-term infants as well. It makes reference when you carry a baby around in a sling, makes them feel secure. The baby feels warm in the, uh, the warmth of the parent's body. Here's the parent's heartbeat. If the mother is breastfeeding, it's very easy to nurse them discreetly and comfortably. Continue what you're doing. Uh, proximity encourages interaction and bonding.
Does your baby will also learn more if they are simply regulated to a playpen or infant seat. Babies like to be held all the time, especially before they can walk on their own, so they can look around and get to see what their parents are doing, which they find totally fascinating and is good for mental development. Talking to your baby as you carry them from room to room, you're also laying the groundwork for language development. The talking the parents do helps build the understanding of language. A baby who doesn't have good receptive skills isn't going to be good at expressing themselves. Okay, here it is. Um, fortunately, for your back sake, <laughs> babies do still need some blanket or floor space uh, to practice their motor skills, but they feel but more secure they feel about your availability, the more comfortable they will be on the floor later. Okay. All right, so this was a really, um, this was a really good article. Um, just kind of, you know, understanding that, you know, they're saying you can't spoil <laughs> the baby by holding on to them too much. And I really love how it goes over some of the benefits of actually like holding your baby uh, and keeping um, him or her uh, close. All right, we talked a little bit, just trying to scroll up to find it. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about sort of the security of it, making them feel safe, uh, that it, it's uh, better bonding in their interactions, uh, and that they also learn more, right? Just from watching you do everything that you do, and that sense of security and safety and nurturing and, you know, kind of responding to their needs actually gives them a lot more independence and self-confidence not to mention happier later on so that's that's honestly that's really incredible just to think um you know holding your baby and even in the little snuggie um can result uh in such a, a huge boost and on top of that then by giving them that confidence and that security when you put them on the floor, right, they're more willing to be there because they know you're like right there. All right, awesome. That was WebMD. All right, let's check out, let's see what Healthline says. I hate those little pop-ups. Uh, da, da, da. So, see it's a myth that persisted for a long time despite the fact experts have been saying for years you can't spoil a newborn well persisted for a long time is definitely true in fact as early as 1986 journal pediatrics published a study about a randomized control trial that found newborns who were carried more tended to cry and fuss less But uh, about a randomized control trial that found that newborn babies who were carried more, oh, tended to cry and fuss less. I was like, wait a minute. All right. Um, we continue. We conclude the supplemental carrying modifies quote unquote normal crying by reducing the duration, altering the typical pattern. Uh, And they say you can't spoil a newborn. A newborn's uh, a newborn baby's brain isn't finished developing yet. In fact, their brain won't be mature for some time. So your proximity helps them respond to all these new stimuli in their environment to begin self-regulating. Okay, so I, I think that kind of sort of leads in a little bit or references sort of back to the WebMD that we were looking at um, in the sense of, you know, everything is new to your baby and 
by having you nearby, you know, I can definitely see it reducing some of the, the stress or um, as, it, as this one put out, new stimuli uh, that he or she intakes. And, you know, uh, let's see. All right, so these aren't quite it. This talks a little bit more about other things. All right, so we're going to go on to raisingchildren.net.au. So, like I said, this is Australia, this is an Australian website. So I, I definitely always recommend that you read more than one article because um, what will happen is, you know, you'll find an article says, you know, article A will say this, article B will say this, article C will say this, you know, maybe article D will say this, right? So if A, B, and D kind of have similar understandings, you know, about the, a, a specific topic and C is just like way out there, um, you know, then you know maybe C isn't a, a quite as reputable article, right? So again, that's definitely why I suggest you read uh, more than one, and you know they each can give you slightly different insights. Uh, okay, so can you spoil your newborn or young baby? So they're immediate answer is no so therefore you just you know stop right there and go to the next article right um all right let's see in the first few months you won't create bad habits by responding to your baby's needs young babies can't consciously connect cause and effect they don't think of themselves as i'm going to cry until i get what i want uh they're saying they're fussing because they might be cold or hungry uh, they're in pain, they need a diaper change. Um, so basically they're saying there's no point of, you know, just letting your newborn cry. Because, uh, like I said earlier, they're not connecting cause and effect. Uh, yep, if you calmly and consistently respond to your baby's calls for attention by sorting out what they need or just by being there, your baby quickly learns to trust that you'll fulfill their needs. And this helps your baby become secure and confident over time. It's definitely a reference back to the um, WebMD article. Cool. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're definitely like out of time for today. Um, so, you know, tell your friend, tell your, um, you know, the new mom you just ran into to, you know, hold your baby as much as you absolutely want uh, because you cannot spoil your child uh, by holding them. And in fact, we found that holding them, your newborn, has a whole lot of benefits, right? Uh, just including giving that child, your newborn, sort of the confidence that he or she needs to be brave enough to venture out uh, into the world, right? There's, you know, again, you know, I think about all the, you know the exploration like they want you nearby but they also you know kind of want to go explore you know um and it's a it's a beautiful thing to give them that confidence so there's your answer be sure to like comment and subscribe thank you so much for checking out the video later